Bonjour, do you know how to say I live in Paris in France in French? Well, today we are going to practice our prepositions in French, that is. Before I start, remember to click on the join button if you want the support guide to this lesson. Right, today we are going to concentrate on the prepositions we use when referring to a town or a country or a province or provincial or a region, whatever. Now we've got different prepositions that we use in French depending on a few things. So let's have a look at them. You could use en as a preposition just before a country, if that country is feminine, but also if that country begins with a vowel or an H. Now let me let me show you some examples. You're going to think, oh, every time she says, you know, but uh, there is that, but there is this exception. Yes, you've got to take in consideration everything. Is the word feminine? Is the word masculine? Is the word plural? Is the word plural feminine, masculine, plural, and so on. Now, on is used, for example, to refer to a country, as in I am going to France, you would say je vais en France, okay? In this example, I'm using j'habite, I live. J'habite en France. Now, it is en, en, as you can see here, because France is a feminine country. Well, it's not a feminine country. The word is feminine, okay? Now, you may, you may think that it sounds weird that some countries are feminine or masculine in French, but they are. And some of them are plural as well, okay? Like United States, for example, okay? So, um, you, it will be good for you to learn a list of masculine countries. And the reason why I'm saying that is because they are, the rest is feminine, okay? And there are a few masculine countries comparing to the number of feminine countries. France is feminine. J'habite en France. J'habite en France, okay? So, any countries, it's en or it's o. But we'll see that in a minute. Now, uh, regions like Bourgogne or Burgundy, okay, you would say en as well. So if it's a region, j'habite en Bourgogne. Now, Iran, which is Iran, just happens to be uh, a masculine country, but it begins with a vowel or an H. So we have to say en. We wouldn't say au Iran. Sounds wrong, okay? J'habite au Iran. Doesn't work. But j'habite en Iran. Sounds better because it flows better. J'habite en Amérique. J'habite en Amérique. Okay? Now, I live in France. I live in Burgundy. I live in Iran. I live in America. But if you wanted to use Spain, which is a feminine country, you would say en as well. J'habite en Espagne. I live in Spain. J'habite en Alsace. Alsace is a region of France. It's a north uh, east. J'habite en Uganda. Uganda is a masculine country, okay, but it begins with a vowel, okay. J'habite en Asie, okay. Again, it begins with a vowel. It's a uh, en that you want before that, okay. Um, uh, j'habite. I said j'habite. It's je vais. Uh, okay, sorry about that. Je vais. Je vais en Espagne. I'm going to Spain. Je vais en Alsace. Je vais en Uganda. Je vais en nazi, and so on. So, en is one preposition. What about a? You would use a when you, uh, ref, uh, when you refer to a town, okay? So, nous habitons à Paris. We live uh, in Paris. And I know that we translate it as in, okay? In French, in English, you don't make the difference if, the, if this is a town or a country you live in. But in French, you do. So, a for town, en for country. So, nous habitons à Paris. If I wanted to add en France, you will see that we have two prepositions here, but two different prepositions. One is a for the town and en for the country. Nous allons à Lyon. Lyon is a town in France. So, it is a. So, what happens when we use o and o? A, U, X. When the country is uh, masculine, and if it doesn't begin with a vowel or an H, you use O, such as Mexique. Nous habitons au Mexique. So, O Mexique, O Japon, O Portugal. Okay? Nous habitons au 
États-Unis. So it's O A U X because we're using a plural here, United States. Okay, O États-Unis. So we live in Mexico. We live in the United States. Do you see the difference? And nous allons au Portugal because Portugal is masculine and Mexico is masculine. I'm going to actually give you some colors here. Okay, masculine, masculine. And Peiba, which is the Netherlands, is plural. So therefore, we are going to use a UX. Can you see that? Okay, so what I'm going to do now is, uh, oh, I forgot, she, okay, she, that's really important, because she is used only to indicate someone's place or business or shop, okay, so for example, if you are at Fred's house, you would say, je suis chez Fred, and you wouldn't say, on Fred, à Fred, au Fred, you wouldn't. If you indicate that you are at someone's house, it would be she always. Okay. So you would say, viens chez moi, come to my house. Okay. Uh, uh, you wouldn't say, um, I live in Tom's house. You wouldn't say, en la maison de Tom. You would say, chez Tom. And it means Tom's house. You don't even have to replace it by house, by the way. Okay. So, uh, je suis chez Fred, I am at Fred's house. Nous allons chez le dentiste, we are going to the dentist. So you may ask, but why is dentist here, someone? Well, it is considered as someone. So any businesses such as lawyer, for example, hairdresser, um, any businesses like that would be considered at someone's house. Okay, so chez le dentiste, we are going to the dentist. Okay, let's practice with uh, four examples and then you will get to practice by yourself if you use the support guide. So, elle a rendez-vous something le coiffeur à 15 heures. Okay, so we've got, I'm going to write all the prepositions we have here. En, à, au, au, chez. Which one of them is it? Now, what you have to know is what is le coiffeur? Okay, le coiffeur is the hairdresser. So what preposition would we use when referring to hairdresser? What did I say? That's right. You would definitely, most definitely use she because it refers to being at someone's house. And I know that it's weird, uh, but <laughs> it's, it's not like a country. It's not like a town. It's, uh, you know, it is someone's place, le coiffeur. So, she has an appointment at the hairdresser at 3 p.m., 15 heures. Elle a rendez-vous chez le coiffeur à 15 heures. Let's have a look at the next one. Is it en for a country? Is it a for a town? Is it o for a masculine country? Is it o for plural countries? Is it chez for someone's house? Nicole habite... Toulouse. So you've got to think, well, is Toulouse a country? No, it's a town in France. So knowing that it's a town, it is going to be A. Okay, I'm going to do that here. It is going to be A. So Nicole habite à Toulouse, en France. Do you see? Okay, let's have a look at the next one. Nous, nous vivons something Provence, something France. So is it is it A? Is it O? Is it O? Or is it C? Right. Provence is a region in France. So knowing that it is a region, it is going to be En. Okay. Nous vivons en Provence. Okay. It's not a town, Provence. Okay. It's a region, provincial region. Okay. South of France. Now, France is a country, so therefore it is going to be as well En, it's not she, it's not a, it's not o, o, okay? Nous vivons en Provence, en France, okay? And let's have a look at the next one, okay? Is it en, is it a, is it o, is it o, a, u, x, or is it she when you refer to someone house, someone's house? Retrouvons-nous moi. 
So, retrouver means ou rencontrons, nous, à Colapset, means to meet. Let's meet. Let's meet at mine. OK, at my house. So, that's quite easy because we are referring to a person. So, therefore, it is going to be she. OK, retrouvons-nous chez moi. Now, you will see on your support guide that we have lots more examples. So, please have a look at the support guide and try to do it by yourself. Okay, that's it. You will see that in your support guide, we've got so many more examples. Why don't you acquire the support guide and try to practice by yourself? That's it for me. Au revoir. Subscribe. Au revoir. Leave a comment. À bientôt. Bisous, bisous. Salut. Thank <laughs> you.